Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things, back again with another video to show you about a fabric folio I made yesterday. I had been wanting to purchase some leather folios for a few of my Bibles so that I can, um, I don't want to say be rough with them, but be not as careful with them because I have them in my Ikea cart and I put them in and out of the cardboard sleeve that they came in and I kind of wanted to have something a little more nice to look at. So instead of buying a leather one right now, because I'm not sure where to buy from, um, uh, anyway, yeah, that's another whole story. I've looked around on Etsy and seen some, just not sure, and I thought, well, I'll try making a fabric one. I'll consider buying one later because I have a couple more Bibles I use for different things that I would like to have a cover for. But I also thought if I can make one with fabric, maybe I could try to buy leather and make one. Even just glue it together rather than punching holes and sewing. So I'm not sure I'm ready to tackle that or that I really want to. But anyway, so I made this. Uh, this is fabric I've had left over. I've talked about that before. Um, I lined it, I ironed on like a adhesive um, stiffener. It's heavier than interfacing. It's all I could get when um, all the COVID crazy was going on and you couldn't even like find anything. It was weird. Anyway, I tracked that down from Joann's and that for some reason was not adhering to my fabric. I didn't have any trouble with it when I made my little needle books, but didn't want to stick to this. But it, it did in some spots, but not all over. Anyway, didn't matter because I kind of sandwiched it. So I had this fabric, the interfacing type stuff, and then this bit of muslin fabric that I had. These were all from making, well, this was from making junk journals this out of the way. We'll talk about that in a minute. And so I have this really cool Bible. I've been wanting to show this too. It's a bilingual Bible. It's the um, English Standard Version and then the Nouvelle Version Seconde Revisé. Um, new version. New Revised Second Version or something like that. Second New Revised Version. I don't know. I forget how to do all the adjectives. But anyhow. This has been super cool because I've been wanting to brush up on my French, so um, I read my Bible every day, so I thought some days I will read it in English and in French. So, for example, the classic verse of all time, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And then you go right next to it, I mean just about right next to it, it has it in French. So that helps me remember the things I learned in high school and college. It kind of brings those things back to the forefront of my brain. And again, I have got to review the tenses because I know that I'm supposed to know them, but I can't remember how to form them. So this kind of helps. I do need to get a French dictionary though because there are some verbs, quite a few, that I'm not remembering. This has been really fun though to compare and it kind of helps me remember to like how would you call it the syntax like how they put words compared to how we put words they would put adjectives well you know somewhere before and somewhere after the nouns but we would also always say like oh anyway we don't need a French lesson this is about this so this is good it's helping me Let's just say that. I got this off of Amazon, by the way. Um, it's printed by the Canadian Bible Society. And I want to say it was around 30 or less. I was glad to do that because I was super happy that it was the English Standard Version, which is something I use all the time. So I made this by basically getting a strip and sandwiching it like I told you. Um, the first step was, though, to just use this green, and I folded the green over here so I could make like a folio pocket, and then I lifted it up on the spine, and then I went down and folded it over. So I had the 
dimensions without measuring them. And I was super careful to make sure it was big enough on the top and bottom. I wasn't planning on sewing and flipping it inside out so I didn't need to leave room for extra bulk. I was just gonna do a fine or close edge around. So I stitched it as one big flat rectangle, all three pieces together. Then I folded it over, well, um, stitched it as a big rectangle, then went back and zigzag stitched it because there were a few places where it got a little too close. Um, the three layers were not staying together. I had them clasped or clamped together. I used these things a lot of times. They're really easy and you don't poke your finger. Super nice. Um, anyway, the fabric still just tends to slide around, even though my sewing machine is supposed to help with not having that top layer slide forward. It still did some. So all that to say, I had to go back and zigzag. So I did a straight stitch all the way around, kind of held it together. Then I went back and did a zigzag. And I just happened to have this deep reddish color as my um, thread. And then the bobbin thread was green. I wasn't too worried about it. I just wanted to get it done. Mostly I wanted to see how this would work. I would like it to be a little heavier duty. I think that's why I don't always prefer fabric things over leather. I like the substance to it, especially when it's a soft back book. A nice stiff leather would help support this better, I think. But this was primarily experimental, and I think it turned out okay. I cut out these hearts today in this brown based fabric that I really like. Oops, here we go. And I put one on the front. So just as a decoration. Now the funny thing is, I was starting to say it in my earlier video today, is that I glued on strips, random strips. I had a piece of rifle company ribbon, whatever that's called, and then then I glued a strip of this brown on it and it just looked really stupid. So I'm like, oh no, I can't stand it. So fortunately it was wet enough still I could pull it off. And then I decided I liked it just plain. I played around with putting some fabric squares, but the greens didn't quite mesh. But I kind of liked the little heart. I'm not that into hearts anymore, but for this, I think it makes a nice little accent. And it's not it's not perfect. You can see the shininess. I, I put fabric glue over the top to kind of keep it from fraying. Left a little bit of a glossy finish, which I would probably rather not have. And then you can see right here, there's a little fold in the fabric and there was one here. That was why I put that ribbon on originally. I wanted to cover up these folds, but it just looks so tacky and cheap I couldn't stand it <laughs> I took it off and like who's gonna care right so oh yeah another thing I did was so when I finally got it all done I was so excited everything was working fine this bottom edge wouldn't allow the flap to go all the way in I, I did glue the top and bottom of these by the way folded it and then glued those edges I didn't try to sew it again I didn't want too much bulk building up at the seam there. Um, so it worked okay on the one side and the top of the other, but this bottom edge was too narrow. I know sometimes people will cut their book to fit in, but I didn't want to cut this Bible because I don't want it to start falling apart. So what I did was I took a little piece of fabric and circled or went around from the front here to the back or the back to the front and just glued that on and it gave me a little more depth here at the bottom. So you can see it here and you can't see the stitching. I could probably go over it with my machine just for the illusion, but this is just all a practical thing for me. So not being perfect doesn't really matter, but if I wanted to have that all balanced out, I could do that. So now, Kind of sticking on the glue. There we go. I think I had a little bit of that 
stuck together. Oh, so you know one thing though, I did kind of think of just leaving this bottom flap open and not looping around that fabric to extend the seam. I thought that could actually make it easier to get the Bible in and out, so it was sort of a mixed blessing that I did that, but I decided that, that would probably end up bugging me or it would feel incomplete, so I went ahead and added that little extra. Let me, um, I'll put this, I'll stop this a minute and come back when it's all put in so you don't have to watch me struggle with that. I will probably pull this out a little bit so I can put both flaps in at the same time. I will be right back. Okay, here we go. I got that in. It's a little bit tight. I was thinking it wasn't quite going to work even though as I was doing it, I checked it a few times. It kind of needs to be shifted around just a little. It seems like it's maybe slightly pulling on this front cover. It's poofing out. But I will mess around with that. You know, it worked out okay. I got some glue there though, and that's bugging me. I'm gonna need to put a sticker there. But you can kind of see, it's very, very thrown together, but it was a fun little distraction project again with all the other things I've been making. It just felt like being creative. Thought I'd try this. And it turned out, I think, okay for a makeshift project. I, I like it all right. I'll try it out, and if if it is not supportive enough, it doesn't feel like enough of a cover to keep this Bible in good condition, I may, I may uh, buy something or try out some vendor if anybody wants to recommend a Bible case person. Um, I'd prefer to buy from somebody who hand makes them. So if you know anybody that deals in that kind of product that you can recommend, please comment below. But anyway, there's another project you can do. You can make a journal cover, you can make a folio for your um, traveler's notebook inserts, which by the way, I want to show you real quick. I just bought these Kanzo Sashi traveler's notebook, regular size notebooks from Jet Pens. This is the cream paper and it's 52 Tomoe River, 52 GSM. It's a nice cream color and I watched a little video that they produce. Uh, this is a copper background and I found out that this these top two characters mean it was either simple or simplicity, something along those lines and that's what Kanso means. So it's a nicely made stapled journal. I got these smaller ones. I like to do, um, I kind of do, I don't know, I guess a book of days is what I call it. But So I might say, met somebody for lunch today, or we worked on the house, or went to the park. You know, just kind of a little more light summary of what's going on, or a few thoughts, but it's not really something I go super in depth in. It's just more like a little record of what's going on in my life or in the family around me or the extended family. So I wanted to stock up on these. I really like the 52 GSM. I've enjoyed all Tomoe River paper, but I like the fineness, that light feel of the Tomoe River 52. GSM Tamoy River. So these came as a set. I have my shipping notes in front of me off screen, but I don't remember what the price was. But if you go to jetpens.com uh, and look up Tamoy River Conzo notebooks, regular size, you'll you'll come across these. So here's what I've heard. Now I was watching Heldon Wrights and she mentioned this. So I inquired at Lockby Journals. Um, I don't know, that might not be their name, but lockbee.com. And uh, the man there who heads up the company or started the company, Chris, I asked him, have you heard about Tomoe River paper going out of business or ceasing to be produced? And he said, unfortunately, those rumors are true. So what they, uh, what I think it's Marley, Marnie, Marley on Heldon Wrights, she said that she heard it's because it was getting too expensive to manufacture. 
It's made from a certain tree or a certain something somewhere and for some reason there's a shortage on that or it's just not as cost effective to produce. I don't know for sure the reason she touched on that. Um, so I was kind of like panicked because, I mean not really, but kind of feeling like, oh man, because it's really easy to get a hold of Tomoe River paper. And it's a little more expensive, but it's not a deal breaker. So I buy it because I love the experience of writing with it with my fountain pens. Here's an empty pen. And so I was thinking, you know, writing with a fountain pen on cruddy paper is just no fun. When you write on a nice paper, whether it's Tomoe River or Rhodia or Clairefontaine, I mean, there's the Apica or Epica, how do you say that one? Um, the Cosmo Air Light and the Tora Next. There's lots of selections, but if you don't have those, I mean, you have your favorite. If this is your favorite, you might need to start considering another. And he said the rumors were true, and he's, he's working on stocking up on it and coming up with a second alternative. So he informed me. So um, I have been ordering just a few, and I, I did show these, but here's a Cosmo Air Light Blank. I got it in the B6 Slim as well. Talked about that. I thought I was getting dot grid. And then the Konzo Noto I bought um, with the dots. I can't remember. Yeah, this is 52 GSM as well, but it feels, somehow it feels different than this. Anyway, so think about that. If you are partial to Tomoe River, you may want to search for some supplies or buy loose leaf if that's around and make your own journals or find another paper that you like. Um, I find that Stalogy works for some of the fountain pens that I have and inks. Um, Loisterm works for some. Stalogy seems pretty good. Loisterm, it just depends on the ink and the pen combo, I think. I don't think there's any one that works well for them all in the non-specific fountain pen papers. So there you go. Let me know what you've heard on that, if you have heard anything, and where, um, what your favorite paper is aside from Tomoe River paper. I'd be curious to see what people use and what you really find works well for your fountain pens and inks. I did order a Splendor Gel from Spain that I'm waiting on. Thought that would be fun to try. And I do like Stalogy and some of it, some of the fountain pen on the Moleskine, Moleskina, somebody said is properly called, um, paper. So anyway, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, but that's all. So journal cover, look out for Tomoe River paper. And if that ends up not being true, please don't get mad at me. That's what I've heard. So stock up, but don't blame me if you don't need to. I just want to give you the heads up. I'm stocking up a little bit, but I'm not going to be crazy about it because eventually it's going to run out. So I'll just do what I can in the meantime. I'll try to find another paper I like. Well, that's all. Enough fidgeting from me. Enough blabbing. And I hope you're having a great day. Stay cool. It's hot out there. At least here it is. Talk to you soon.